So to the lyricist's last question, who could ask for anything more? The answer to that is me. I'm Cleveland Johnson, President and CEO of the Morris Museum. I'm here to ask you to invest 45 minutes in getting to know the Morris Museum a little better. I'm here, perhaps, to help you find your place in the Morris Museum story. So welcome. About nine months before COVID-19 turned our world upside down, the Morris Museum had already shaken its own institutional foundations through a strategic process of revisioning. We'd barely begun to gas up for the exciting journey ahead before the global pandemic hits and lets the air out of our tires. I'll forgive you, therefore, if you don't yet know our new mission to interpret the past and discover the future through art, sound, and motion. The vision behind this unique focus show me another museum that commits to this creative angle, is to acknowledge the fundamental centrality of our most internationally illustrious collection, the Guinness Collection of Mechanical Musical Instruments and Automata, but to explore its relevance to our contemporary lives. For example, what's the thread that connects the world of this 1925 player piano, perhaps in your grandmother's parlor, and the smart speaker in your kitchen today? Alexa, play George Gershwin's I've Got Rhythm. Fascinating Rhythm, I've Got Rhythm by Leon Bates from Spotify. <sighs> Alexa, stop. Basically, most humans just don't like to practice the piano. So we invent machines to do it for us. Here at the Morris Museum, we've just begun to re-examine and reinterpret the way we think about everything we do, connecting the past, present, and future, searching for meaning while looking through the unique lens of art, sound, and motion. For you Bickford Theater supporters out there, notice how beautifully the performing arts fit into this formula, right? The Smithsonian Institution has given us its seal of approval, so to say, by including the Morris Museum in its nationwide network of affiliated institutions. Like the introduction of our new mission, our announcement that New Jersey finally had a Smithsonian affiliate just came shortly before the pandemic changed the conversation for everybody. Tonight, I'm thrilled for this chance to have you help us turn the pages in our Morris Museum story. This is not a sleepy bedtime story. This is a thriller, a real page turner. We've even got some breaking news. 
so stay tuned. The Morris Museum began humbly in 1913 as a curio cabinet holding a few objects for teaching at the Morristown Neighborhood House. Over the ensuing century, we would outgrow four locations as our collection grew exponentially, leading to the 1964 purchase of Twin Oaks, the former Freelinghausen estate. With this historic home as our foundation, we continued to expand our architecture, our collections, and our services to the community. In 1970, Gallery space was expanded and the 312-seat Bickford Theater was added, giving us the rare opportunity to integrate the performing arts into our museum programming. In 1973, the Morris Museum became the first in New Jersey to be accredited by the American Association of Museums, and our facilities were further expanded in 1990 and 2007, making us the second largest museum in the state. Transformational was the acquisition in 2003 of the Murtaugh D. Guinness Collection, one of the world's most important collections of mechanical musical instruments and automata, robotic figures of animals and people. As we explored how best to use this remarkable collection, we discovered that the Guinness Collection was much more than just a collection of historic artifacts. Actually, the Guinness Collection tells the origin story about how technology influences our lives today in the 21st century, with topics such as digital coding, robotics, artificial intelligence, video gaming, and music on demand. Indeed, we are primed to flourish as a center for education about science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM. What's more, as a museum, we are uniquely poised to add art into the equation, expanding STEM into STEAM. In 2019, our Board of Trustees embraced this potential to build on the opportunities offered by a nationally significant collection like Guinness, to forge a new focus and mission of interpreting the past, discovering the future, through art, sound, and motion. Although the Guinness Collection is specialized, our intent is to interpret it broadly and explore its contemporary relevance in dialogue with all of our collections and, of course, with the performing arts. A strong endorsement of our new path came later in 2019 when the Morris Museum was selected by the Smithsonian Institution to join its Smithsonian Affiliates Network of 200-plus institutions across the United States. We became the only Smithsonian Affiliate in the state of New Jersey and are honored to embrace our new opportunities to bring Smithsonian resources to the state. Playing on a national stage and having access to such remarkable resources is one thing. Securing the financial means to do so is another. Our future will ultimately be defined by how you, our community, invests in and responds to this transformational honor. Graffiti, as you've probably never seen it before, in a museum. Morris Museum has opened its doors and its walls to some of the greatest graffiti and street artists in New Jersey. In graffiti, like, you know, I'm a white kid from the suburbs, but like I can go to almost any neighborhood and have an understanding of that culture. It's not very common that you hear the words graffiti and museum mentioned in the same sentence. Which was amazing to me was it was like, do your thing. It wasn't like, you know, at first, when they first contacted me, I'm like, oh, you know, I could do these abstract, you know, florals that I do. They're like, no, no, no do a graffiti piece on the wall. I'm like, I got this. It was a great moment for the art form and bringing our show to uh, you know audiences that don't normally get to see the work that we create. I can almost guarantee 100% there's no accountant that's better at graffiti than I am. I've been thrilled to present my What Makes It Great series at the Morris Museum Bigfoot Theater for the last two seasons. As an institution, it's a rare combination of a superb museum and an equally superb theater. It's a place with a big vision, but one of the things that makes performing there so special is actually its intimacy. It's a people's museum and a people's theater, a place that brings the community together. 
I am an Automata maker and kinetic artist from Argentina. And three years ago, I was invited by the Morris Museum to participate on an exhibition called uh, Chorus Characters, Akashi of Kinetic Art. And what a wonderful experience to meet other fellow artists and what a pride to exhibit in a museum with such magnificent collection of Automata. Last year, two of my Automata entered the permanent collection of the museum. So I'm proud and happy to feel that I am a part of it, of the Morris Museum, through my art. You have a wonderful museum. Enjoy it. And I hope I can uh, visit you soon. I've probably played 20 concerts or so over the past eight or nine years at the Bigford Theater. And when I was just starting out and older players would hire me to play concerts there, they'd say things like, we don't have to worry about the sound in this room because Lewis and his team do such a great job. Or this hall sounds so great. You're going to love playing there. It makes things so easy to make music or even the audiences that come to this series are educated, hip listeners, and they're going to really dig what we're doing. And even the outdoor concert series this past summer of 2020 was of the same quality, the comfortable, familiar environment that the Bigford Theater and everybody there created for the audiences. When I first entered the doors of the Guinness Collection of Mechanical Musical Instruments and Automata, I just stood there stunned. I could not believe the depth and the scope of this collection. It is gratifying to know that the Morris Museum is dedicated to encourage the minds of their guests to see the unlimited potential when you combine the science of sound and motion with the creativity of art. It has been a great honor for me to have had the opportunity to display pieces of my art in the museum. You will see things at the Morris Museum that you will not see anywhere else. I mean, where else is there a museum in the world that has a such a, a large kinetic collection. They probably saw a video of my mechanical horse online and I installed it at the Morris Museum and that was my first time and I was very surprised and interested and intrigued by their extensive collection. Speaking to you from my studio in Perth, Western Australia, where I create cybernetic artworks. 2018 it was my pleasure to exhibit some of my interactive kinetic pieces at the Morris Museum. The work that the museum does and in particular the Guinness collection is vitally important on the world stage. My name is Richard Rood. I'm a violinist with the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra. I performed recently at the Morris Museum which was an amazing experience. I got to see some of the museum prior to playing and I flipped. It was so enchanting. The curator gave us a spectacular tour. When I brought my septet to the Bickford last year, we were able to come earlier in the day to do some children's concerts. We were able to talk about history and jazz and culture and the marriage of all of these things and to have young people exposed to black American music so early in their lives I think is so important. Five or six months or so into the pandemic, when we hadn't played any live concerts, we were so, so happy to be able to play live music again. And this was only matched by the feeling of walking out on stage and seeing this wonderful audience enthusiastically taking in the music. And I just gotta say that I was able to bring my show, XOXO Moon Girl, with Almanac Dance Circus Theater to the theater, and I felt incredible about this experience. My name is Tamisha Harris, and I am from the show Josephine. We were able to come out there and perform for the beginning of the concert series that was happening. It was the first time that we performed the show outdoors, and it was a success. We had beautiful backdrops, I had great scenery, seeing the audience out there ready to go on a date night under the stars. I really believe in what the museum is doing and I urge you to support and donate if you can. Thank you so much and I hope to see you there soon. Thank you so much donors for your contributions to support this space. We can only do that through donors, so donors if you're listening, help out. I feel like I should have been here way before this. Um, I was kind of bummed out about myself, I should have known about it. <laughs> Put my nice jacket on and my camper tonight for this video to be in the gala spirit. Uh, support the Morris Museum.
I attempt to push the tapestry genre as I investigate issues of identity, life, and the human condition. I am also interested in the notions of beauty, utilizing myths and historic textiles as points of departure, such as my Icarus uh, tapestries. And in many of my tapestries, I utilize precious materials such as metallic and silk thread, along with pearls and coral beads, trying to make them as opulent as I, as I can. And um, I'm just very fortunate that uh, Ron Lovaco had seen my work about 20 years ago when he was the curator at the High Museum in Atlanta and acquired two of my works for their permanent collection. And I'm just happy that we've kept in constant contact over the years and happy that the Morris Museum is the venue of my latest work. And I want to thank him and I want to thank all of the Morris Museum for putting this uh, exhibition together. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ron Labago, Director of Exhibitions and Chief Curator of the Morris Museum, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to our current exhibition, Threads of Consciousness, the Tapestries of John Eric Rees. John is widely recognized as the leading tapestry artist in the United States. He's been active for nearly 60 years, and he weaves everything himself by hand on customized looms. John first gained notoriety for his abstract weavings in the mid-1960s, at the beginning of the international fiber arts movement. Then, in the early 1990s, he transitioned into creating figurative imagery with contemporary narratives that allude to topical issues. His unique vision and mastery of the medium would go on to capture the attention of the contemporary art world. Two overarching themes in John's work are the ideas of journey and transformation. In the 1990s, he was captivated by the classical and neoclassical sculpture that he saw on his various European travels. Historically, Greek and Roman mythological ideas have served as content for tapestry narratives. Here, in neoclassical male, he depicts an ancient Grecian sculpture in profile but on the usual pure white marble surface, he has added crystal stones in an abstract floral pattern inspired by facial tattoos, referencing this subcultural trend of body adornment that is becoming more and more mainstream. So here, antiquity and traditional ideas of Western beauty are in tension with alternative expressions of body ornamentation. In addition to his artistic practice, John is also a collector and dealer of antique costumes and textiles. In 2002, he created tapestries in this archetypal coat form, and this form has remained an important part of his body of work. In Night Flight, we see the theme of transformation or metamorphosis. Moths hover over caterpillars against a ground of black freshwater pearls. The idea of transformation is universal. As individuals, we are constantly growing and transforming. In this theme, I also see a parallel with the Morris Museum as an institution in transformation. With our recent Smithsonian affiliation and our unique vision of art, sound, and motion, we are poised at a very exciting juncture in the museum's history. And I'm happy that you're here on this journey to champion us along the way. Hi, this is Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everything that the Morris Museum does in our district. I've certainly been there. I'm a member. I've been there with my children who love it. Uh, just a wonderful experience, especially to have the, the Spark Lab, um, which we're doing in partnership with the Smithsonian, and to have the museum that is the Smithsonian affiliate in our district is very exciting. 
Um, I'm also so glad we were able to get some of the PPP loan money to the museum to help you through this tough time. And uh, as you can see, I'm standing in front of a picture that the museum has loaned to my DC office, which brightens up the place and um, reminds me of some of the areas in our district, but it's uh, just wonderful to, to be able to thank you again for all of that you do for our community. Whenever I talk with people about the Morris Museum, I often find that we're talking about two different institutions. Having served as many generations as the Morris Museum has, our institutional reputation can feel pretty baked in to someone in my position. I know that many of you visited the museum as children. I used to come here growing up all the time um, and was very fortunate to be able to take in the variety of exhibits. I know that some of you brought your own kids here when they were young. I visited for the first time the summer of 1966. I discovered the museum by accident while taking a walk with my children. I was a staff member here uh, at the Mars Museum at a very special and significant time. I was in uh, the museum on the evening that Desmond Guinness gave the Guinness Collection to the Mars Museum. Since I began in 1997, I have witnessed the museum grow leaps and bounds, both literally and programmatically, with the arrival of the world-renowned Guinness Collection. But I have never been more sanguine about the museum's prospects than I am today. Some of you may remember attending live shows in the Bickford Theater decades before the old community theater in Morristown was transformed. What I find so striking about the, Mor the Morris Museum is the combination of it being both a theater and a museum. That's such a unique thing in this country. We're positioning the Bickford Theater to find its proper role to play at the Morris Museum, identifying its unique niche in the competitive landscape of New Jersey performing arts establishments, emphasizing emerging performers, experimental works, and synergies with our museum exhibitions. And your new mission, interpreting the past, discovering the future through art, sound, and motion. What better way to explore history uh, and art and culture together in a way in the present age that makes it relevant and meaningful and informs us about how we move together. I would have to say that the current staff of the museum is the reason that the museum is a Smithsonian affiliate, the reason the museum is becoming a museum of art, sound, and motion. You don't have to run to New York. You've got some of the greatest stuff now. We're one of the first institutions nationally to bring back live performance during the pandemic. We had to reinvent. We started with Jazz on the Back Deck and then the Lot of Strings Music Festival. We were able to see an inspiring and moving musical about the life of Josephine Baker right here, outside on the car, garage car deck under the stars. And yes, it was socially distanced and you could bring your own accoutrements to the show. We're expanding access to our broad community. One major breakthrough uh, that I found important about the Mars Museum was they were one of the major museums to show interest in the New Jersey schools. By participating in New Jersey's Families First program, giving free museum admission to families and individuals enrolled in state assistance programs. But they said, what about the Morris Museum? I'm like, what about the Morris Museum? They have, you know, the largest museum collection of automata and they're only 20 minutes away from you. I'm like, that's fantastic. It was a great place to bring my kids. They could always find things they could touch. We're home to America's 10th Spark Lab, laying the foundations to become a center for STEAM education and the technology of our Guinness collection. Let's do some more. No, that, that doesn't play with anything. Here it comes. You can see it, can't you? There it is. In our everyday digital life, it's so important to have a museum like the Morris Museum. For our computer brains may be outstanding, but we always need mechanical techniques to make the world move. I think it's a fantastic idea to add kinetic art to your museum, adding up to the relevance of your historical collection and adding the vision of individual artists. I love to see the special exhibitions they have. A few years ago, I loved the Isabella May show so much that I was able to buy this piece of art at the gala. 
one of our most important missions is to collect, to study and promote the arts in motion, so that today and tomorrow, humanity is capable to resist all the lockdowns, to shift and continue its march forward. Let's inspire each other, let's exchange ideas and keep in touch. Bye. So I think the, the one word we would use to describe this museum would be... Magical. I think yeah, magical. Inspirational. Dynamic. Excitement. Five generations later, my family has shared my love for the museum, including my great-grandchildren. The Morris Museum is the place. When the Spanish flu pandemic struck our world over a century ago, the Morris Museum was in its infancy. Any institution with roots going back over a century will have experienced and survived any number of tempestuous storms. COVID-19 is just the most recent and likely will not be the last. What ensures institutional survival, however, is not turning back to some mythical safe harbor behind the setting sun, but to follow the rising sun to new horizons. Your support allows us to honor the generations on whose shoulders we stand to gaze into our future and embrace the promise it holds. Thank you for being a part of the Morris Museum's storybook adventure as we explore the worlds of art, sound, and motion together. Mm -hmm.